This is why I do this monthly. Hey guys, what's up? It's the Mobkiller again, and uh, I'm here with a, another review for the Minecraft game. This time is 1.20.5. That's not 1.21, unfortunately, no. That's not on 1.21, it's actually 1.20.5. Um, they did, although, uh, release something right afterwards, about two days later, the 1.20.6 update, but that was only just to fix a bug. Something about, a uh, trader, llama, inventory, shifted, partially lost during upgrade. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move on from that. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you guys enjoyed the last video that I posted with the over 500 crew, um, cause they seem to like it very well. Here's a little snippet from it now. Oh, that's who I Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I, I'm not good with jump scares. I, I ain't good with jump scares. Let's get right into it. So, as always, when a patch note comes out, it has this little, like, blurb. Or not little, but, like, a blurb before it. Uh, to, you know, make it sound, you know, interesting and fancy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'll read it out to you, as always. Um, <clears throat> quote. Do you smell that? Ah, uh, yes. It's a magical tale, telltale scent of a release day. Tuesday. Oops, excuse me. And what a release day it is. Today we are shipping Minecraft's Driver Edition 1.20.5, also known as the Armored Pause Drop. Travel to Scavenavia well, and Badlands biomes to say hello to the Enderling Armadillo. Find and befriend eight new wolves variants and equip your canine companions with diable armor made from other these armadillo scoots and go adventuring together. On a technical side, the armor pause drop is also introducing a change to how Java Edition spawns chunks, works details of which we've covered it in the change of snapshot 24w038. I will not be looking at that because I've learned my mistake from my last video that technical changes are boring to do. Earlier this year, the TLDR version of this change is that we are making the spawn chunk radius a configurable game rule and decreasing the default value by 98%. This should translate to a noticeable performance boost for most players. Guys with 10, 1040 graphics cards and 1650 graphics cards, we have a chance. We have a fucking chance. So what are you, so what are you waiting for? Stock up on food and water and start heading, start reading through the complete 1.20.5 change logs below. It is a long one. Happy scoot bushin. New features, added armadillo and added armadillo scoots, added the wolf armor and added the var and added wolf variants. They weren't kidding when they said this was long. Like, check, check this out. Like, this, it's it's just, it's pretty freaking long. Um, It's not as long. Actually, no, it is pretty long. It's, I had to screenshot like 22 fucking sections of this thing just for this video. But it isn't as long as the last update or the one before that. You know the the patch the one point twenty point two patch that I did and the one point twenty update that I did. That that there's not a lot added, but there is a lot to cover because of the technical changes. But um, I'm gonna try and cut this video short. I'm gonna get ignore the technical bit, go straight into the actual like the actual thing, show you what it does, show you what it is, and give you my review on it because apparently no one actually does that. They just go, hey, check this out. It's cool, and let's move on. Like, they don't give a general review. I'm going to give you my personal review. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't like it, I'll fucking hate it. I don't give it. What I, I don't care. I don't care what anyone says. Like, if I hate it, I hate it. That's, that's my genuine review. And it's my own personal opinion. So anyone can disagree. And I'm not going to give two shits. Because I can do what I want. Anyway, we'll move on. Okay, so the armadillo is a new passive mod. Armadillo drops armadillo scoots periodically. When brushed, armadillo spawns in, scav in savannas. And Badlands, the armadillo's favorite food is a spider eye. Okay, so now we don't have to eat the spider eye. We can just give the spider eyes straight to the armadillos. Armadillos are tempted, tempted by spider eyes. Feeding two adult armadillo spider eyes can make them breed. Feeding a baby armadillo spider make it grow up quicker. The armadillo rolls up when it, dissect, when it detects such a threat as a player sprinting, riding a mount, or riding a vehicle. Undead mobs, a mob, or a player it has recently been attacked by. The armadillo does not roll up when fleeing in water, in the air, or when it's on land. When an armadillo is rolled up, it does not walk, cannot eat, and will not be tempered by food. Its shields will protect it, reducing damage taken, even allowing it for a full resistant, full resist weak attacks. It will continue to scan for threats, occasionally peeking 
to check the surroundings. If no threats are detected for four seconds, it will unroll. Spiders and cave spiders will run away from armadillos there that are not in rolled up state. So spiders uh, are just a bunch of pussy boys against this thing, all right? Like, they'll mess with the armadillo when a spider comes around. I might have to bring an armadillo when I come deal with cave spiders because I fucking, I fucking hate cave spiders, man. Like, I fucking hate them, man. Anyway, let's let's bring up the little boy now. All right, this is our little boy here. Check it out. It's a little bit pretty cute. It's very quiet. Can he roll up? Oh, he rolls up. There we go. Will he... Will he unroll? What if I step away? <gasps> you know what? I ain't gonna lie. The animation for this armadillo is actually quite smooth. The animations for the for the new mobs that have come out uh, have been pretty good. Have been pretty like been pretty accurate to their little animation ads that come out come every now and then. Hello, a little friend. All right, so that was the armadillo. We're gonna talk about its scutes now because they have a little section for it. Because apparently you can now use it to make wolf armor. Armadillo scutes. Scutes are dropped by armadillos periodically when an armadillo is brushed. Armadillo scutes can be used to craft wolf armor. Dispensers can be used to brush armadillos. Scutes off armadillos. Mmm, you're gonna have to test that one later on your own. You might, apparently a dispenser can be used to brush armadillo scoots off up. So I'm guessing you put a brush in a dispenser and then press the dispenser and then it will, you know, brush the armadillo like a bucket will just come out of a dispenser like you, when you press it. Wolf armor. Wolf armor can be created with armadillo scoots and, and can be dyed in a similar fashion to, le to leather armor. The wolf armor will protect the wolf from most damage sources until the armor loses its durability and breaks. The wolf armor shows signs of breakage as durability goes down. Using the armadillo scoots on the wolf armor while it's equipped on the wolf will repair it. Using shears on a wolf that is wearing a wolf armor will drop the armor. The wolf armor can only be equipped on a tamed adult wolf. The on only wolf's owner can equip, repair, and shear the wolf's armor. Dispensers cannot equip nor remove the wolf armor. So if you own a wolf, you can physically put the wolf armor on and take the wolf armor off. No one else can do that for you, because uh, clearly they don't own the wolf. Uh, and uh, using scutes in your hand and just putting them straight onto the wolf can repair the armor straight away. Motherfucker. Shut the fuck up. I'm going to put my phone on mute. Jesus Christ. Sorry about that. Yeah, so you can put the scoot straight onto the wolf armor instead of having to take the armor off and then put it in an anvil and then use the scoots in the anvil to repair it and costing your XP. This, you can just simply just grab it and just chuck it straight on. We also have like wolf variants. So it's not just the simple plain white wolf anymore. We have multiple different types of wolves depending on what biome they come from. So wolf variants, new wolf variants have been added. The wolf variant is determined by the biome they spawn in. Wolves spawn in packs with a default of size of four. So they're always gonna have friends around them. So if you fuck with one, you're gonna get three coming on you. Pale wolf, the wolf we are all familiar with. This variant spawns in the, ti the ti tiger biome. So like the trees and stuff, you know, generic, where the foxes are, I think. Woods Wolf is a variant that spawns in the forest biome. This will be the, the dominant wolf variant that you will be able to find in the overworld since the forest biome is very common. Ashen Wolf, a wolf that spawns in the snowy tundra biome. Uh, so like peak mountains and stuff with spruce logs and stuff like that, that you'll find the Ashen Wolf. Black Wolf, a variant that spawns in the old growth pine tundra biome in smaller packs of two and four. A chestnut wolf, a wolf variant that spawns in the old growth spruce tundra biome in a smaller pack of two and four. Rusty wolf, a wolf variant that spawns in a new location for wolves. The spruce jungle biome, a smaller pack of two and four. A spotted wolf, a variant of wolf that spawns in a new location for wolves. The savanna plateau biome in a large pack of four to eight. Uh, a stripped wolf, a striped wolf, a wolf variant that spawns in the new location wolves. Uh, the wooden badlands biome in a large pack of four to eight. Snowy wolves, a variant that spawns in the new in the groves biome. This lone wolf is a rare type, as it always walks alone. And like that's okay, so a white wolf is like a very rare white wolf. When summoned in other ways, e.g., using the spawn egg or using the command summon, the variant selection follows the natural spawning biome rules with the following extension: rusty wolves will be selected in all jungles like biomes including jungles and bamboo jungle biomes. Spotted wolves will be selected in all savanna-like biomes, including the savanna and the wind sweep of savanna biomes. Stripped wolves will be selected in all badlands biomes, including badlands and eroded badlands biomes. 
So like the content says, like if you want to get a particular type of wolf, you have to actually go outside your house and venture off into these different biomes to hopes to find these types of different variants of, of wolves. Unless you want to be a fucking hack and just fucking spawn them up straight up for you and never play legit. But I'm not one to judge. I think they got an image of all the wolves all together with the guy jumping on the horse in the patch. I'm just going to pop that up right here while I list off the uh, new achievements that I've added to the game too. So, um... Here it is over here. Out of the following achievements, isn't it scute? You get more armadillo scutes from an armadillo using a brush. Uh, sheer brilliance. I fucking hate you guys. Remove wolf armor from a wolf using shears. Good as new. Repair a damaged wolf armor using armadillo scutes. The whole pack. Tame one of each wolf variant. Fuck Jesus Christ. That's a big one. That's a that's a big one. That's that's a big task. If you're a dog lover, good luck doing that one. Okay, another thing that uh, has been put into the update that I'm a little bit uh, not getting used to and a little bit annoyed because texture packs can't, you know, work. So, I don't know if you guys notice. Uh, oh, actually, I haven't even put up a video. Oh, no, I have, sort of. With the 0500 video, I don't know if you noticed the texture pack that I was using. It was the classic alpha uh, alpha version of Minecraft because I like that look. I really, really like that look. I, I use it a lot. I also like the sounds that it has, the oof sound and, you know, the original doors, the sound of lava or the water. I like the original look. The thing is, though, with this new UI change and this new um, resource pack change is that I can't apply those texture packs anymore. The whole, that's, the community has to revamp the entire, the, the, the entire resource library. Like, they have to start from new again to, you know, work on this new one, you know, this new update. Now, here's the image at the bottom. Uh, as you can see here right now, it says the UI update. The UI update has been, uh, has been to sport the fresher look and to be more consistent when it comes to the layer of different UI's elements while retaining the essence of a feel of an old screen. It kind of reminds me of Bedrock though, I'm not gonna lie. And I, you guys probably know my feelings with Bedrock, it's not the greatest. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't, I don't hate it. My, I, I, I'm gonna give this, I'm gonna give this out of 10. I get a, I'm gonna wanna give it a kind of a five, a solid five, because it's trying to, what Minecraft is trying to do is trying to get up with the time, with the times. It's trying to update, but not change so much about it. But the thing is, though, it ruins the re it ruins the ability to change your resource packs because I like the original loading screen. If I want to have the original loading screen, I want to have the option to do that. With this, with this UI, I can't do that. I've tried many, many times. I've tried downloading a different texture pack. It will not work. I mean, I guess that was. I guess, I guess that's it. I guess I'm sticking to 1.20.4, the last update where I can actually change my texture pack. Well, well, well. Although I rev I give the review about a a, a, t a five out of ten for the UI, because you know I get it. They have to update their thing to get with the times. You know, it's business is business. Business is the business. Okay, there's a little paragraph here that talks about the spawn chunk changes. Um, I'll I'll just I'll just read it out loud. Uh, if you're interested, I'm guessing the spawn chunk changes it changed it changed its size. Like it used to be a radius of ten. Now it's saying it's a radius of like fucking 19 or like i don't know i'm just gonna read it out loud spawn chunk changes the size of spawn chunks changes from a radius of 10 a 19 by 19 entity ticking chunks to a radius of 2 a 3 by 3 entity ticking chunk this was done to reduce the loading times as well as memory and cpu usage we opt to not fully remove spawn chunks to allow players who currently utilize this function to continue to do so. Uh, added a new game rule, spawn chunk radius. To set the size of the spawn chunks, possible values of 0 to 32, where 0 is completely disabled and the spawn chunks is 10 and equivalent to the functionality before this change, default is default value is 2, equivalent to the 3x3 three three entity, entity ticking chunks. Note that setting this to a high value might require allocated more memory for the game in the launcher. So now you now have the ability to change your radius of chunks from 10 by 10 to 2 to fucking 32 and destroy your PC. I have no idea what is purpose. I only I only use this function, like the, the bit where you can see your chunks by F3 pressing B or G, is to mine out a chunk. So if I wanted to mine out a chunk on a certain plateau and go to a certain level, I'd use the... I would use the chunk uh, viewer button to use it for mining. So I'd be like, okay, cool. He's, he's, oh, we're in a chunk. I'm gonna mine out this whole giant chunk. If I can change the size of that, could be could be good, could be useful uh, for mining purposes. Personally, for myself, I give this a six out of ten. I give this a solid six out of ten. Okay, so I think that I've 
messed up before. We've reached the end of the actual patch note itself, the things that are in the game forever. What I've actually, what I'm actually going to read off for you next is the experimental features. And as you can see, probably over here, I have a little plateau with all the experimental features in there for you, it, it also including the um, the stuff for the new update. Um, the thing that I messed up before though is that the last review that I did, the 1.20.2 update, um, that was the villager experimental uh, update. That's still an that's still an experimental. I still have my fucking thoughts about that villager thing. It's not good. That's got a that's got a two out of ten for me, mate. Hopefully these experimental updates uh, are better, or you know, are any good. So now I'm gonna actually show you uh, each and every single one of them, Skyhose Minecraft style chess mob review stuff. You know, how, you, you know that kind of stuff. Okay, so as we fly over here, we're now gonna. This is now off script. I've got three pets here just to accompany me. I've got one named Jeffrey Epstein. I've got one name. Oh, that one's got no name. And I've got this one named Bloopies. Fucking sick guy. Anyway, um, so what has been added is they've added the mace, added the breeze rod, they added updates to the breeze, they added the wind change, wind charge item, added vault blocks, redesigned bad omens to give access to ominous events, added ominous bottles, added ominous trial spawner, added ominous vaults, and added ominous trial key, and added bogged mob, and added six new mob effects. Now, I should have everything here, like, they got the banner designs, you got the ominous stuff, you got the new vaults key, I had no idea, and I've also got the mace and some new stuff like that, cool. So you, 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 you got a little island for yourself? Hmm? You All right, we'll get started with the uh, automatic crafting table. So as you can probably tell, a normal automatic... Oh, I'm going to handle. As you can tell, with a normal crafting table, you would obviously have to grab your items and then put the items in the crafting table and then obviously do it normally. But how you would do the... How this would work is that it's powered. So you put the items in. So this is how you make a heavy core, by the way. Or a mace, a new item that's in the game that everyone's talking about that can kill a warden in one hit depending on how high you are. Just doesn't matter. To make to do to how this works is that you put the items in there, and I'm assuming that you can drop the items into this via hopper so that it's automated because it's kind of useless when you have to go up to it, go into it, and then place the items in there, and then come out and then press the button. You might as well just fucking use a normal crafting table because you can take it straight out. But I'm assuming that the hoppers are going to be very helpful. Anyway, you put this in here, and the items come up on the right. Uh, you can also I don't know if you already noticed, but you can also leave the items in there and walk away. And act, it acts as a sort of a storage unit for you. Anyway, you put the items in there and it's on the right. You then click a power source and it pops out straight for you. And there you go. You have a mace. Or you have whatever you just crafted. Now, I guess we'll move straight on from the crafting table, straight to this. I'm going to give this review. I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. Like a 6 out of 10. Purely because of its redstone capabilities. Someone can make like a factory and like be like oh yeah we, we 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 this factory crafts gold and apples for you automatically all you got to do is paint 10 diamonds you know and then you got that's this inside of a front of, it, you can make pretty much make this as an atm put the put the ingredients in there does the whole thing for you and then presses the button automatically and then boop comes out now we're going to move on to the base uh i've got this image up on the screen right now uh and i'm going to read it out to you for how the mace works while i get the mace in my inventory and change my thing uh so a new heavy weapon to smash your enemies be, uh, can be crafted with a breeze rod and a heavy core. Leverage, l leverage the weight of this new weapon to deal additional damage the farther you fall before hitting your target. Try it out by jumping down towards your target and hit them before you hit the ground. Successfully striking a target in the sway will reset all vertical, all vertical momentum and negate any fall damage accumulated from the fall. Other entities near the struck will then be shocked, will be knocked back by the immense force of the mace. Using the mace will decrease its durability like any other weapon, repairing it with a breeze wand and a, at an anvil. Players can use a mace in combinations with wind charges to launch up and deliver devastating smashes attacks on their enemies. The baseline additional damage dealt by the mace smash attack is 3, 1.5 hearts, per fallen block. These existing enchantments can be applied to the mix, mending and breaking, smite, span of other plus five X and curse of vanishing. So I ain't gonna do a demonstration. You've you probably would have seen everyone talk about this fucking this this fucking weapon. Like it's apparently can kill a one in one hit. Oop! I kill a one in one hit and like it's pretty pretty devs pretty strong. Like it's, apparently it's nuts. So yeah, I'm not, I ain't gonna do a review. 
I ain't just going to, I ain't going to do a demonstration. I will give you a review on it though, from what I've seen. Uh, and I'm just going to tell you what, you know, specifically what the patch notes says about it. My review on this weapon, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to, I'm going to be dead ass with you. I'm going to give it a four. This is a four out of, four out of 10 for me, man. Cause look, I mean, it's a, it's a big weapon. Okay. I was a bit of, I was a bit of a disappointed when they, when, when the ax became the main weapon after 1.9. Um, and since now seeing this is going to be its main weapon for this update, it's going to be a little bit disappointing, man. Like I like the traditional sword. I prefer the sword over this purely because it's like, it gives me a bit of a competition when fighting either players or monsters. This is just a bit of an overkill, mate. And I don't even know how easy the, the, the materials to get this will be to get this will be because apparently them you can get these materials coming out of the, uh these things and from killing a new mob called the blaze guys we'll, we'll touch on those later now before we move on to the next chest uh they got the three new enchantments have been introduced as a new geek to the mace so i'm just going to read them off to you now you got the density you got the breach and we got the wind burst so the density is the common enchantment accessible to accessible in the enchantment table and on the enchantment books in loots has five levels mace enchantments with the density can do more damage per fallen block per density level damage dealt per fallen block is increased by one per level of density you got the breach enchantment which is the rare enchantment accessible in the enchantment table and on the enchantment books in loots has a mass had and has a mass level of max level four the mace enchantment with breach reduces effect ef effectiveness of armor on the target the effectiveness of the armor is reduced by 15% per breach. So I'm guessing it'll just, it's another way of piercing through armor. Um, the wind burst enchantment is a unique enchantment, which can only be found in an ominous vault has three levels. A mace enchantment with a wind burst will emit a wind burst upon hitting an enemy, launching the attacker upwards and enabling the linking of a smash attack one after the other. So it's a, it's, it will give you the ability to perform combos with this, with this mace. Each level will bounce the attacker higher up in the air and obviously making it do more damage in case you're finding a water or an energy dragon or a wither or anything like that. Now, I think we got the breeze in this chest. Here we go. We got a breeze right over here. We're going to we're going to fly over here so it doesn't mess with the stuff. So this is a breeze. So he's got like three rods inside, and then we got the wind around him. I'm going to get a blaze for a comparison. You better not fly off I swear. So we got a blaze here. Blaze is a lot more cooler, a little bit more louder. This one's a little bit more calmer, but this one flies. Sort of. He kind of hovers. This one doesn't fly. He just falls. Like, he just falls. He's very stagnant. It's like a tornado. This one, he hovers. He hovers. So I'm going to give this guy, you know, what? he's a cool mob. I ain't going to lie. He's, he's not he's not a bad mob. He's not a cool. He's not like an ex, exciting mob. He's actually a pretty decent mob. I'm gonna give this mob a, ra a rating of about a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten because he's useful. He gives up a bit of a challenge because he you know he will shoot you know bl uh, breeze and stuff like that. Uh, he'll actually provide a challenge if you're not using the mace and you know not get out to the teeth. Um, so yeah, seven out of ten for that guy. When you get a breeze rod though, you can also put in your crafting table and get wind charges out of them. Now wind charges, uh, you can put them to the ground and then oh, throw them to the ground, which allows you to fly up to the sky. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing about it because it's pretty fucking self-explanatory. I ain't going to fucking explain it. My review on that, same as the bla same as the breeze, 7.10 because you know they're actually pretty fun to use. And this is what I mean by that, pretty fun to use. Wee, 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 wee. Yeah. Okay, so now we're up to the spy, the trial spawner and the trial chambers. The trial spawner now has the same two default loot tables as they, as they have in the trial chamber. The trial spawners can now only activate when a player is in the line of sight. Trial chambers. Trial chambers are now more considerably buried in the terrain found on the ground. Ominous vaults can now be found inside rooms, interactions, and at the end of corridors, decorated pots in the trial chambers can now have a chance of displaying a flow, guster of scalp pottery shards, redesigned dispenser traps, redesigned specific rooms with new variation of challenges. You know, the, 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 the design redesigns are there from nine, three, five, and six. Update layouts and the placement of vaults reduced the amount of trial spawners and corridors. Added a atranium to the corridors. Made various layout changes in intersections and corridors. 
Known issue, corner quor quadrants in slanted may still fail to generate correctly. Nah, nah, I ain't gonna find one. I ain't gonna bother seeing one. Until if I find one, I find one. If I don't find one, I don't find one. I ain't gonna show you one today. Um, I didn't think they were actually gonna put that in the game, but apparently you can find one in the game, a trial chamber. But anyway, I'm actually here just to show you how these things work. Now, I don't know if you realize, but if I walk away, they close their mouth. But if I go closer to it, mouth opens. Now, how to use these things, you simply just grab one of these, a trial key. I'm gonna make a couple of them. Go over here, put the key in. It just gives you a bunch of loot. Pretty simple. You get the keys after you finish a trial event in the chamber. Put that there, and there we go. Get a bunch of loot. Get a decent amount of loot. Get a pretty valuable loot. Not too bad, not too good. And then when it when it's finished, you can see the light at the bottom goes out. Which means it's empty. Can't use it again. Here though, um, I'm gonna do a little test for you. I'm gonna do a little uh, demonstration for you. So this is an actual this is a spawner or a different version of a normal mob spawner, but this is this one can be found in um, trial chambers because they also hold loot as well. So I'm gonna put a mob in there. And when I put a mob in there, it activates. And this is a you know, a normal, regular trial, trial spawner. Now, uh, when I'm in survival mode, it will activate like a normal modern mode, but what I will do is I will actually drink one of these. Now, each one goes for an hour and 40 minutes, but each one has a different level. I don't know why they have a different level. I, I have no idea. Um, but I'm just going to go grab the normal bad omen one. You can grab bad omens in now bottles. You don't have to go and find pillagers to get the bottom effect to do raids on villages you can just get them in bottles now apparently now how this work i'm going to go into survival mode or game mode one no, game mode zero and this will activate now if i do this this will turn into a ominous trial spawner which makes it a little bit more challenging so i'm just gonna finish all these mobs off we are oh, oh fuck oh worst enemy <laughs> Oh shit! I'll put that on. Ooh. Come on. Ooh. What was that? Oozing. Okay. Come on. Come on, bastard. And then once you complete it, you get a bunch of loot. Whatever the fuck that is. What is this? Regeneration. Hell yeah. I'll drink that. And then lick. And then it disappears and it spits and it just starts smoking. That's how the child spawners work. My review on this, I'm gonna give it eight out of ten, cause I, you know, I, you know who I am. I'm a mob killer. I like things. I like fighting. I like fighting mobs. This is a good challenge to add to the game. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. So in case you didn't know, uh, in case you, you that that whole segment there with the ominous stuff was confusing as shit. Um, I'm gonna. It's fucking raining. Are you serious? What that was called an ominous event. Now an ominous event can be activated by having a bad omen on you by drinking the potions like I just did or by getting them from a pillager as you would normally do now if you drink it from a potion it will last an hour and 40 minutes but if you get it from a pillager it only lasts until you either get into the chamber or get into a villager here's a quick image of what how that works um, that image is also in the patch note uh, on the launcher it explains sort of how it works you know you either drink the potion you either do it for a villager or do it for the chamber Again, though, I'm giving this thing a bit of... I'm giving this, giving this whole thing a rating of 7 out of 10. Oh, 8 out of 10, because it's pretty sick. I like a good I like a good challenge. I like a good challenge. Okay, so now we're getting on to the next bit of the patch notes. We're getting into the bogged section. Apparently, this is a new variant of skeleton that shoots poisonous arrows. So, like the other skeletons that we have, the regular one, the snow one that shoots slowness arrows on you, we now got a bogged version, and this is what the bogged version looks like. He ain't, his, he ain't heat resistance. I'm sorry, buddy. This is the bogged version. Bog skeleton. If I get the other skeleton. So yeah, like the like the bogged one, we got now a skeleton. We got a skeleton one and we got a... Um, what are they called again? A stray. That's right. That's what they called. It. Stray. We got a horse as well. And now we have a new addition to the skeleton. The bogged one. I, I'm going to give this guy, you know, a 7 out of 10 in terms of, you know, a review. This guy looks pretty sick. I ain't going to lie. He's got mushrooms coming out of him. He's got textures on his skull. He's got a bit of his brain coming out. He's got wide eyes. You know, good reference. Uh, same as this guy. This guy's got wide eyes. Uh, in a 1v1 though, I think the the Stray will win against this guy. This guy seems a bit more weak and nimble. Uh, and more like fast. This guy seems more tankish and, sl and you know, deals slow bows and stuff like that. 
But none of these two come close to the fucking with their skeleton. This guy's fucking tall, man. Don't fuck you up in a fight, boy. Don't you fucking look at me like that, you little shit. They are faster to take down with a 16 health instead of a 20 health. They attack, a, they attack at a slower interview of 3.5 seconds instead of a 2 second. Boggs has a chance to drop arrows of poisonous when killed by players. These mossy and mushroom-covered skeletons spawn naturally in the swamps and mangrove swamps. Can also be found spawning from trial spawners in some trial chambers. The bog drops two mushrooms, and either both red slash brown or one of each, when sheared. We're coming up to the end of the video now. Uh, I've listed everything that's... Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you, lastly, is these new banner designs that have been added thanks to the update. Uh, we've got the, bra the breeze bit and the wind bit. Uh, what are they called again? I forgot the name. We got the Gusta. That's right. Gusta and the fucking, I forgot the other one. I forgot what this one's called. Uh, we also got new templates, smithing templates for our armors, which is the flow armor trim and the bolt armor trim. Uh, breeze rods uh, can be, you can use to duplicate these and you use a copper block to duplicate the bolt armor trims. Uh, I have no idea where to find these. I'm assuming you find these within the chamber dungeon. Uh, we also got some new pottery shards as well the scrape pottery shard the gust pottery shard and the flow pottery shard and we've also got some copper doors copper trap doors copper crates and copper chisel blocks which are pretty freaking lit for all you builders out there you got an iron door and a copper door Un unfortunately it doesn't lock though so you, like i like an iron door so you're gonna have to it's, those, it's one of those metal doors where you now can open without using a button unlike an iron door what are you guys pushing each other for? What are you... Rude. But yeah, all you builders out there, we got some new copper blocks too. Uh, the, the same copper rules applies. Like you wax them to keep the same, like same color. If you don't wax them, they'll degrade to green. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think I'm thinking I'm gonna put on screen now what the armor trims look like. Um, oh, he's on my shoulder. Lol. I'm gonna put on on screen what the armor trims look like. Uh, here we go. We got the one boop, and then the other one over here boop. I'm going to give those guys a bit of a... I'm going to give those guys a 7 out of 10. They're pretty decent decent looking trims. I ain't going to lie. Anyway, guys, so I hope you enjoy this video. Um, this review is a little bit lackluster, to be honest. Personally, I didn't put much jokes into this, although I will, you know, try and get it out as soon as possible. Uh, it'll probably be out today. It'll probably be out tomorrow. It'll probably be out yesterday. It'll probably be out... To be honest, probably never. Um, the update came out yesterday, I believe so. It's currently the 30th of the 4th. 2024 at 6:30 p.m. I think the the update came out yesterday, and I was gonna do a video with it yesterday, but I spent all day yesterday prepping all the stuff, doing a little bit of research, and um, screenshotting all the um, uh, patch notes, notes, patch notes, notes, and then I had to go to work straight afterwards. So I had to quickly do it today before I go to work again today. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will hopefully see you guys next video. See y'all. Bye-bye.